Good. So hi, welcome to the ZMR rounds. And I saw this patient on this Friday. Uh, he came with complaints of uh, unilateral twitching uh, on his left eye. The patient had uh, this typical twitches or what he called as kanna tudi So where the where the twitches were present, the twitches were present below his left eye at this area exactly. The patient was wearing a mask, so I wasn't able to find out exactly where it is. So I asked him to remove the mask, and then I was able to find a very very subtle, easy to miss twitches. Okay, that's it. Then I refer the patient to Orbit Clinic and there they diagnosed as orbicularis myokinia. So what is a myokinia? It's quite a word. Most of us wouldn't have heard about the term myokinia, but myokinia means it's an involuntary worm-like muscle ripples or muscle contractions. Okay. Why this diagnosis is important? Because orbicularis myokinia is going to fall under a very important differential diagnosis or a spectrum of conditions causing a seventh nerve overactivity. So there are basically four conditions which can cause seventh nerve overactive it's a very important table from aao okay the first is going to be a benign essential blepharospasm second is hemifacial spasm third is eyelid myokinia which is our diagnosis and fourth is a facial myokinia benign essential blepharospasm means bilateral involuntary episodic contractions of the lids as well as the facial muscles okay very important to differentiate from the reflex blepharospasm which you see associated with photophobia in patients who's have, who are having dry disease or uveitis conditions but a BEB is going to be bilateral. The other Bs, the site of dysfunction is going to be a basal ganglia. Okay, it's idiopathic. Nobody knows why it happens, but there are some associations. One is going to be the Meek syndrome and extra pyramidal disorders like Parkinson's and Huntington's disease and secondary to drugs. This is called tardive dyskinesia. So what drugs? Antipsychotic drugs. The treatment is going to be a Botox. Is going to be the treatment of choice. We're going to inject botulinum toxin into the orbicularis oculi muscle. In fact, Botox is going to be the treatment of choice for many of the conditions what we'll be discussing now. Okay, the second is going to be a hemifacial spasm, which is very much similar to a benign essential blepharospasm, but only thing is going to be unilateral. It's a unilateral condition. So amongst these things, only benign essential blepharospasm is going to be bilateral. The rest are going to be unilateral. Hemifacial spasm is again an episodic contractions of the facial muscles. First, it starts with unilateral orbicularis oculi, and it can progress to the other facial muscles as well. The important thing to notice, the site of dysfunction or the, uh, or the origin of lesion is going to be in the cerebellopontine angle where any tumor or a blood vessel can compress the facial nerve causing this hemifacial spasm. Therefore, MRI is indicated in these patients. The treatment is going to be again Botox and you can treat the lesion by doing a microsurgical decompression of the facial root. There's going to be a surgical intervention for this. Now, the third is going to be eyelid myokinia, which is our patient's diagnosis. But before going on to that, let me just talk about the facial myokinia, which is very closely related, which kind of mimics like your hemifacial spasm. Just that facial myokinia is going to be a continuous one. Hemifacial spasm is going to be an episodic or intermittent contractions. So both are unilateral. But important thing is a facial myokinia, the lesion is going to be in the pons. Lesion is in the pons. It in involves a facial nucleus or the fascicle. So any intramedullary disease of pons can lead on to a facial myokinia. Importantly and most importantly in children could be pontine glioma. In adults it is multiple sclerosis. So treat the underlying cause in facial myokinia. Whereas our patient who had a benign orbicularis or a benign eyelid myokinia, which is very common in many patients, even, even amongst us, we can experience, we might have experienced this typical twitches, which, are, which will resolve on its own. The common triggers are caffeine or coffee, stress and reduced sleep. But it is important to have a note on this seemingly benign. Yes, it is benign, but we never know because uh, the hemifacial spasm or facial myokinia always start with the orbicularis oculi muscle and then they can progress the entire muscles of the face. So always have a close watch or a review of these patients. So the message is going to be a twitching might look simple, might look easy to be dismissed, but a twitching can herald something serious. So it is very important to order neuroimaging in those patients if you're going to suspect any space occupying lesions in these patients. So that's going to be the, the take home message. And uh, these are two important pictures. This is hemifacial spasm involving one side of the face. And this is been an essential blepharospasm, which involves both eyes and the facial muscles as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share two videos uh, on facial myokinia and eyelid myokinia. So watch them. So you'll be complete with this topic on facial nerve overactivity. So thank you so much. Good night. Bye bye.